Welcome to a video tutorial of a valve adjustment for the 2013 Kimco Like 200i. Part 1 is teardown. We're going to start with the seat. Now the seat has six fasteners. There's two hex bolts in the rear, two that are down in the pan near the front, and then two Phillips head screws which are higher up near the helmet holders. Here they are circled in red. Just remove all six fasteners and the seat will pop out with no problem. Whoop, there we go. There's the guts of our Kimco Like 200i. With the seat removed, now let's move on to the battery. Battery cover only has three Phillips head screws, seen here circled in red. It's two notches that we're going to use to pry it up. Once we do that, we kind of pull it towards the front of the bike as we're lifting out. And voila, there's our battery. So we got to remove those two wires. I start with the red one on the right side of the bike, remove the screw in the washer, then remove the wire to the side, replace the washer onto that terminal, and then put the screw back in. That's just going to keep everything nice and neat. And reduce the risk of losing any pieces. Do the same for the other side. Remove the screw in the washer, take the wire out of the way, put the washer and the screw back, just finger tighten. Now everything's nice and a neat little package battery will just slide right up and out of the bike. Just put it that off to the side somewhere. Now the body panel. There's two Phillips head screws, one on either side. Just remove those and then we'll deal with the clips. It's plastic but it's very sturdy plastic. There's five clips that we're going to be dealing with to take this off. Three that go along the top and one on either side. Now on the left side of my bike there, you see, push in and push down. In for the side one, down for the top one. While you're doing that, kind of pull out with your other hand using the hole in the opening of the panel and you should get a little bit of room. Do the same for the right side, or the side closest to the camera, where you can't really see and then you'll get a little bit more of an opening. Then the middle part, that clip is the strongest one. You use a butter knife, stick it between the clip and the plastic, push down and out, and voila, the pedal slides right out after this. Well, maybe not slides right out. Kind of have to wiggle it a bit because there are two clips I didn't mention before that are on the bottom. Now the valve cover. First thing is the hose. You see at the top there, there's a little clamp that you have to move back. Once you do that, here we're looking at it from the top, kind of pull the hose lightly while nudging it with something else, just so we don't rip it. I use a butter knife, of course. Just tuck that away. Now the cover itself. There's four hex bolts to remove. It's probably wise to move the to remove them gradually. Start by loosening each one, then after each one is loose, gradually do the rest. Alternate between them just to make sure that we don't stress any one of the threads. Now each of these bolts is a different length. So when you put them down, make sure you place them so that you know where they go. Bottom left on the bottom left, for example. There's the first one, which is the bottom left. Bottom right, I couldn't quite reach with my fingers, so I loosen a bit more so I could. It's a little shorter than the bottom left one. Top left is the longest. Now, of course, when you remove the last one, always remember to hold on to the cover just to make sure you don't drop it. And there we go. Voila. Our valves. So let's set it at top dead center. It's pretty easy to do. Our fan cover actually gives us access to turn the engine 
with a socket. The size that you use for this is a 9 sixteenths. And we must turn clockwise, don't forget that, always clockwise. Now instead of taking off that fan cover and looking for that T-notch, I decide to go with the holes on the valve wheel. We want the large hole in the middle and the two smaller holes on either side. I get it near center here and then I'm going to move around to the other side for a better view. There we go. Remember to slow, sorry, remember to turn slowly clockwise because once in a while it does kind of jump forward on you. There we go. We're at top dead center. Let's check our valves. So you see there, the space we're working with is pretty tiny. Of course you knew that. It's a little bar that goes into that hole. Or sorry, it floats above that hole. Each of the bars is surrounded by a little nut. The space between that bar and that hole has to be, for this bike, 0 0.004 inches or 0 0.1 millimeters. On these feeler cages, it actually says 0 0.102 millimeters. So I felt with mine and I s noticed I actually tried with a thicker um, gauge because they were loose. It was so loose, I mean, with the original 0 0.004, I was able to fit wider gauges in no problem. So I know my valves are loose. So we have to loosen the nut on the outside of that bar. What I like to do is stick the gauge in there, finger tighten that little bar, and then tighten the nut. I left my gauge hanging so that I know that if it loosened, the gauge would fall right out. And if I tightened it, it wouldn't tighten too much because the gauge is there blocking it, right? Do the same with the top. And of course, just a side note, as you are tightening it, you don't want it too tight to move the gauge. Just so that there's a little drag when you're moving it. And there you go, 0 0.004 inches or 0 0.1 millimeters. Now I gave an extra little tighten here just to make sure. I did check again with the gauge, it's just not on camera, but you have to make sure. Then we gotta put it all back together. Start where we ended, with the valve cover. Put in the four bolts, and I started by finger tightening. If you don't have a torque wrench, then I would suggest taking your time with this. Not to go too tight, but definitely tight enough to make sure the seal is nice and tight. This metal is soft, so you don't want to tighten it too much. Now that hose, don't forget the hose. The clamp was a bit of a pain to get back on, but we got it. Of course the body panel, I started with the middle clip to put it back on. And then I put my fingers in that hole in the front and then put my thumbs up top and then kind of squeeze. At least I'll do it in a second here, here we go. I got the left side first with at the top of the screen. It kind of clicks into place sooner than the right side here. Now the right side, sorry to block the view, but I had to use a butter knife to kind of bend it inward. See that? can't see now, but I pushed it in there, no problem. The other side, the bottom clip still wasn't in, so I lifted up and pushed in. And there's a little bit of strength, and there you go. Everything's nice and flush. Return the Phillips screws. And of course the battery. 
put it back in the same way you took it out. The red is on the right side of the bike, by the way. Take out the screw and the washer. Put the wire in, the contact, sorry. Then the washer, then the screw. Same thing on the bottom. Contact, washer, screw. Tighten it up. Make sure it's all secure. And now the cover. Kind of put it in on an angle. Push it in. Good to go. Return the three Phillips screws. Smaller ones on the sides. And the larger one in the center. And of course, back to where we started, the seat. Just as easy to put in as it was to take out. Line up the holes. Return in the Phillips screws first, near the helmet holders. And then of course, the four hex bolts with my ratchet. You can inspect the bike too after, just look underneath, make sure there's nothing dripping, if there is, clean it up and make sure it's not still dripping, because a little bit of oil does come out when you take that valve cover off, just a tiny amount. Thanks for watching.